Chapter 5, Learning Objective 5. Explain and prepare a classified multi-step income statement for a merchandiser. Businesses are required to show expenses on the income statement based on either the nature or function of the expense. The nature of an expense is determined by its characteristics or simply what it is. For example, when expenses are listed in the income statement as interest, depreciation, income tax, or wages, this identifies the nature of each expense. The function of an expense describes the grouping of expenses based on their purpose or what they relate to. For example, an income statement that shows cost of goods sold, selling expenses, and general and administrative expenses has grouped expenses by their function. When expenses are grouped by function, additional information must be disclosed to show the nature of expenses within each group. The full disclosure principle is the generally accepted accounting principle that requires financial statements to report all relevant information about the operations and financial position of the company. Information that's relevant but not included in the body of the statements is provided in the notes to the financial statements. A merchandising income statement can be prepared in different formats, but for this course, only one format will be introduced, the classified multi-step format. This is the format that's generally used for internal reporting because of the detail it provides. Here's an example of a classified multi-step income statement using assumed data for XYZ Inc. for its month ended December 31st, 2023. We start with sales of $100,000. Then we have a subsection where we subtract sales discounts of $1,000 and sales returns and allowances of $500. These are contra revenue accounts because they have the opposite impact on revenues and they add up to $1,500, which results in what we call net sales of $98,500. Sometimes companies will report only the net sales of $98,500 on the face of the income statement and have a reference to a note to provide more detail on the sales discounts and sales returns and allowances. Next, we show cost of goods sold of $50,000, which is subtracted from the net sales of $98,500 to arrive at a gross profit of $48,500. This is the profit left to cover the operating expenses of the business after covering the cost of the product sold. Then we list all of our operating expenses. This example shows operating expenses classified by the business functions of sales and then general administration. You can see some duplication here where we have two sets of salaries, $11,000 for sales staff and $9,000 for office staff. We also have duplicate expenses for rent and depreciation for selling and admin, but advertising expense of $5,000 is only a selling related expense, not an administrative expense. And also, there's $1,000 in insurance expense that's classified as general ed administration, but not for selling activities. The sales expenses add up to $28,000, and general ed administrative expenses add up to $15,500 for total operating expenses of $43,500. When deducting operating expenses from our gross profit, we end up with what we call income from operations of $5,000. This is the income or profit generated by doing what the business does, selling stuff. Then we can have a separate section for non-operating or other revenues and expenses, such as rent revenue or interest expense. These are classified as other because XYZ isn't a landlord and its business is not primarily in the rental market, so we treat that revenue as other or extra. Interest expense is also generally classified as an other expense because we'd like to see what our operating income would look like if we didn't need to borrow money and finance it and incur interest expense. This allows us to disclose the interest expense, but outside of operating income. We want to see if the business can generate profit without any help. The total net other revenues and expenses are $10,500, which when added to income from operations results in income before tax, of $15,500. Then we calculate our income tax expense, in this case $3,000, and after subtracting that from our income before tax, we end up with net income or our income after taxes of $12,500. This classified multi-step income statement 
shows expenses both by function and nature. The broad categories that show expenses by function can include operating expenses, selling expenses, and general and administrative expenses. And within each category, the nature of expenses is disclosed, including sales salaries, advertising, depreciation, supplies, and insurance. Again, notice that rent expense has been divided between two groupings because it applies to more than one category or function. Again, since the normal operating activity for XYZ is merchandising and not renting, revenues and expenses that are not part of normal operating activities are listed under other revenues and expenses. So XYZ Inc. shows rent revenue under other revenues and expenses because this type of revenue is not part of its merchandising operations. Interest earned, dividends earned, and gains on the sale of property, plant, and equipment are other examples of revenues not related to merchandising operations. We also see that XYZ Inc. deducts interest expense under other revenues and expenses. Interest expense does not result from normal operating activities. It's a financing activity because it's associated with the borrowing of money. Another example of a non-operating expense is losses on the sale of property, plant, and equipment. Income tax expense is a government requirement, so that's shown separately. Notice that the income tax expense follows the subtotal, income before tax.